everyone and welcome. This is Melissa Armo with the Stock Swoosh. And I'm reviewing the Stock Swoosh Show live trade room tracking for advanced trader risk for 2019. So January through April, August 15th. So basically we've got about four and a half months left in the calendar year. So still a good amount of year left to go and really a very, very solid year this year for the Stock Swoosh Show Live Trading Room. We've been very focused this year. A lot of winners, particularly even in the last month, and it's been earnings season, which is a nice time to trade. So advanced trader risk is around 2,000 per trade. Year-to-date results, 337,516. So again, this is the day trades. This is not options, this is equity trades. I get that question a lot. The options newsletter is a separate, separate service. So for those of you that would like more information, <coughs> you can call me or email me. You can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com or call me at 929-3200-GAP. But if you're interested in following me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype, you can go there as well and follow me under the Stock Swoosh. So we're getting into the end of earnings season, then there's the fall period, and typically the fall period is a very profitable time to trade. So we're going into the next earnings season then, which will start in September after this season is over. And earnings season is a good time to make money. The year started off very bullish. Most of the trades we do in the day trading room actually are shorts. Most of these are shorts and some were longs, but I usually go to the short side first. Why? I prefer shorting for the quick day trades in and out because most stocks when panic comes in when they're gonna sell off happen quickly. Sometimes we're in a trade two minutes, three minutes, five minutes. Sometimes we're in a trade 15 minutes. If I'm in something for like an hour, that's actually a long time, <laughs> uh, you know, again, for the day trade. So we're typically looking to get in and out between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time, okay? Every once in a while, I will do more than one ticker symbol or more than one trade a day, but that's rare, okay? <clears throat> so you need to know if you want to do this, you have to have that morning period 9.30 Eastern time where the market opens at 10 o'clock, you have to have that time available, okay? Because that's when we're gonna go through. And I call the trades live in the room. I call the entry, I call the stop, I call the exit, okay? And that's why you wanna be there. And again, you learn the system, you must learn my system to join the room, but it, it, it is so important and vital to hear my uh, market call each morning and then also to get the live calls. So good start to the year in here, again, January. And this SWK, that was a really nice gap too. And then we started out, then earnings season started. It was, well, the first month of the year was very bullish in January. Market made a bunch of new highs. And then again, earnings season started towards the middle part of February and it started to get a lot busier. Uh, Twitter was a good gap, I remember that in February. And then again, we got into earnings season. Uh, Domino's Pizza, that was a nice gap. CVS as well. There are some days where we don't do any trades. If there's no setup, then I don't do anything. Typically, as you can see here, though, I like to focus on one ticker symbol a day. Then we started out in March in here. Some really nice days where you had some big moves like cost. That was just an amazing gap. And every once in a while, I'll call an option in something and a day trade. That happened in Disney a couple of times. Then into the end of March in here, again, every day I'm looking for one thing usually, one or two. Nike was a nice move, and uh, if we don't get any good gaps, then we don't do anything that day. And I'll look at the market, and I'll analyze the market, uh, but I typically am trying to look for quality. Every once in a while, I also do a retake. You've seen here WBA took a retake. Len as well. That's something I review in the Golden Gap class, too. Uh, WTW was a really nice gap. This was back in April. Again, Disney was a big winner for the options trade, and we did some day trades in Disney as well. A couple trades here in the market. We did the market a lot this year, actually, considering since back to the beginning of the year, because the markets had a lot of volatility for big moves, sometimes long, sometimes short. Uh, this was then into April. Twitter was a nice gap. That was earnings. IRBT, two trades in that. And uh, XLNX, big winner, end of April. No trades on the 29th. Again, getting into May, still the busy season in here. Again, earnings typically is what we look for or news gaps or gaps that are in the sector. Okay, we all might look at the whole sector, whatever we're happening to do, whether it's tech or whatever it may be. Really nice trades in the SPY in the 7th. Again, you remember, going back at what the market was doing, the first four months of the year, it was making new highs and rallying up quite a lot. So some trades in here are longs. 
Uh, Baidu was a nice one. That was a really nice gap. Pulled a lot out of that. The 17th, the 20th, that was really the gap of the month for for May. And Disney was really the gap of the month for, for April. Low was a nice trade. Baidu was a nice trade. W JWM was a nice trade. Every once in a while, I will do a couple things if I really see that we should just pile it on. Uh, off of the Memorial Day, again, holiday time is a time to really uh, take your time and not go heavy when people are off and you don't have big professional traders in the market. When the volume is low, it's not a good idea to trade. Domo was a good gap on the 7th. Lily was a good one. CRM was a good one. Uh, a couple of other good ones there in the Twitter. No trades on the 17th. Adobe was a nice gap on the 19th. BYND was another big winner that was really mostly, we had some day trades in that, but really the options was a big winner for that in June. Uh, Baidu again, Mu was a good one, CAG. Then in July, we had BBY, Spy, Domino's Pizza again, Goldman. A lot of these you know, you know the companies. Netflix was a good one, AMAT, UPS, Took didn't work, Tesla was a winner, Starbucks was a winner. Most of the things we do, you would know the companies. Again, we trade stocks that move with volume, real companies that you know of. UAA was a good one, TWOU, that was a really nice guy. Uh, then in August, we had BYND, and uh, you know, we, we started out the beginning of the month where you're looking and you're looking and you're looking for stuff and you say, wait a minute, let's focus on the quality. And sometimes you see the quality, you can just pile on the, the uh, size. Um, again, whether you get out right away in the morning and hold the trades is totally, totally up to you. But I do think it is important. It is very, very important when you're looking to trade to have the consistency. So for me, I like to get in and out quickly in the morning. M was a nice trade. Uh, KSS was a nice trade too. And uh, here we are. So let's just see what happens the rest of the year. So an advanced trader risk is what? 2,000 per trade. You can risk less than that. It's about the difference between the entry and the stop. So if I say 10 by 50, that's 40 cents. You'd size yourself accordingly. 1,000 shares of risk would be what? $400. So your risk needs to be the same and consistent on each trade to have consistent results, okay? You can have a beginner risk, an intermediate risk, or an advanced risk. And if you want more questions on that, come to the webinar Monday or feel free to email me. But if you wanna do this for a living, if this is what you wanna do or just have extra money on the side, I don't think it matters, but I do think you should know what your goal is and why, why you're trading, why you're doing this so that you can ha set your goals for the yourself. And I look at it in the bigger picture, weekly, monthly, and yearly. So I teach my method in a class, it's called the Golden Gap Course. It's a class I teach once a month. The class for August is August 24th and 25th. You must take this class to join the live trading room where you would have gotten all these calls for the whole entire year, okay? And this is a good class to do to get in before the fall earnings season. 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. Class tuition is $64.99 US dollars. Uh, you must email me for forms to sign up. The class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. Email me again or call me if you want more information. If you want to do the combo, it's $69.99 US dollars. Class is online. This is the Golden Gap and the Trends course, and you save $500. The Trends is about long-term trends, and the Golden Gap is about the rating system for the day trades, okay? But if you do them both together, you save. The Gap Options newsletter is not the trades we discuss here. It's a separate service. You will, this is not a class. This is a newsletter subscription service for one year's worth of trades that get emailed to you. You do not have access to the room with this letter. But if you don't have time to day trade actively, like I said, between 9.30 and 10, you would take the trades that you get when you get them emailed to you. And this is $59.99 for the year. So if you'd like to sign up for the class in August, email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. It has been a great year.